Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought we'd start taking a look at the other important component of your edit and that is audio and audio mixing. And in this first lesson of looking at audio mixing, we're going to get in and talk about setting up your timeline to mix audio. Okay, short introduction here, let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so I'm simply going to Alt Tab into Symphony, obviously a command tab for all of my Mac friends out there. And you'll see that I already have an audio clip over here in my bin. This is just a mono file, it's just me talking. The Quick Brown Fox. A little bit distorted, over. but you know what? That's the okay. lazy dog. Now, what I want to do is I want to import some audio because there's an important step in the importing of audio process that I need to make sure that you understand. So, to import audio, much like importing anything, very simple. What I'm going to do is simply right-click in my bin. I'm going to navigate up here to import, and let's just navigate to where I have some audio. So, I'm just going to come to my computer. I'm going to come to the Y drive. I'm going to come into footage. I have a folder in here called music. I've got some music elements in here from Rampant Design Tools, a uh, music library. So let's choose Dirty South, and I'm just going to pick any track here at random here. Sure, we'll pick this one here. And I'm going to select this track. And what I could normally do, you know, if I wasn't really thinking about it, is I could select a track that I want to import and simply say Go. What I'm going to be told is that, hold on a second, this is a broadcast WAV file, and it actually contains timecode information. So in this case, I need to tell Media Composer Symphony that I'm working in a 2398 timeline. You'll see now that I have timecode associated with this clip. So what I'm going to do is simply say OK. That audio clip is going to import, and now what's going to happen when I double click on it, you're going to see that I have a stereo pair down here. Now how do I know it's a stereo pair? Well what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to mark this clip by hitting T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows, and I'm going to edit this into my timeline by simply hitting B. Now you're going to see what's happened is, is that I've had a sequence created that has a video track, a left mono track, a right mono audio track, and then the stereo pair. Now the reason that this track here, this audio track, isn't right up here at the top, or actually the second track, the top audio track, is because it's just that. It's a stereo pair. It's not mono channels. So let me go back and show you how you're going to actually import this and be able to choose whether you want it to be a stereo file or dual mono. Now, in this case, if I wanted to split this clip and have it as dual mono, which is how I'm accustomed to working, and many Final Cut editors and even Premiere Pro editors are accustomed to working this way, very simple. All you have to do is simply right-click on the clip if it happens to be a stereo pair and simply say split all tracks to mono. Now you have two mono tracks, left track, right track. But how do we do this in the import process? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete that clip again here. We'll just select the sequence and the audio track here. We'll just say select everything. Let's just make sure I actually select everything here. There we go. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to say delete. And what we're going to do again is simply right click. I'm going to navigate up to import. I already have my music tracks here. But what I'm going to do is instead of just selecting the track and saying open, I'm going to come into my options. What I'm going to do once I'm in my options is I'm going to navigate right over here to audio. You'll see that what's happening is, is that I've told Symphony that this is a multi-channel audio file and that it's a stereo A1 and A2 pair. What I'm going to do is simply click edit and I'm going to tell Symphony not to join these two tracks. I'm now going to say OK. You'll see that I can come in. I can have the sample rate convert to source sample rate to project sample rate. You know, I can say, you know, don't convert anything. There's a lot of options in here that I highly suggest you go through and read before you simply say OK. Now, I have all the settings set the way that I like them. So what I'm going to do is simply say OK. Now, what's also important to note right here at the bottom, you'll remember when I imported the clip from Rampant Design Tools, I told you that it was a broadcast wave file. Well, how did Symphony know that? Well, you'll see the option right down here at the bottom auto detect broadcast wave monophonic groups right there at the very bottom. So you'll see Symphony is set up to detect broadcast wave files. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to say OK. I'm again going to simply say open. What I'm going to be prompted for again is what time code do I want to have this start at? We're going to go with the broadcast wave 2398. I'm simply going to say OK. And you'll see now that instead of having one stereo track, I now have two mono tracks. Now what I'm going to do is simply hit T again on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. I'm going to hit B to edit this clip into my timeline. And what I want to show you, a couple more things I want to show you here with just in regards to this clip right here. Now the first and probably most important thing is that when we play this clip, what I'm going to do is just come back to the beginning. I'll simply hit the space bar. 
So pretty cool music track here. But what if I only wanted to hear what was going on with the left channel? Very easy. I can simply navigate right over here and just solo that left track, and there it is. Now on the flip side, if I want to solo just the right channel, I can then simply click on the right solo button. And now once I hit the space bar again, you can see that we now have the audio soloed onto track two on the right channel. Very nice. Now we're going to get into actually how we can get in and pan this in a later tutorial, but I just wanted to show you as far as monitoring goes, that's how you're going to get in and you're going to mute and you're going to solo tracks. Now a couple other things I want to show you here. Now for some reason you don't have these options right here, they're very easy to get access to. You'll see that if I navigate right over here to the top of my timeline and I hover over this drop down, you're going to see what option is brought up is the track control panel. As soon as I click on it, you'll see I now have more options down here to choose from. Now we just talked about solo and muting. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to deactivate solo so that both my tracks play back together. Perfect. And you'll see the very next button that I have right here for moving from right to left is I have the option to turn this channel off altogether. I can now simply hit play again and I'm only hearing that one channel. Very nice. Now if we keep moving over to the left here, we now have another option which is to get in and to do some audio mixing. Now I'm going to save mixing for a tutorial. It's probably a couple tutorials away still because we've got a lot more things to talk about about setting up your timeline to do a mix before we actually get into mixing. So we're going to get back to this. Take my word for it. Last thing I wanted to show you in here is of course the audio waveforms. Now for me, I don't normally like to come in and just turn one or another one on. I normally like to turn everything on or everything off. Now for me coming in and selecting each one individually is just a bit of a pain. So what I do have the option of doing, much like we talked about a long time ago, is I can come up to tools, I can navigate down to command palette. What I can do is say that I want to do a menu to button reassignment. What I'm going to do is come over here, I'm just going to select this button right here. I'm going to navigate over to my little hamburger at the bottom. I'm going to come up to audio data and I'm going to simply say waveform and you'll see that I now have that option over here inside my composer window. What I'm going to do is just close the command palette and now I can simply just click on waveform and you'll see I now have the waveform displayed literally with the click of a button. And of course, this can be mapped to a keyboard shortcut as well. Just to even more, you know, just to speed up that workflow even more, why not have it on the keyboard instead of having to come all the way over here to the composer every time you want to turn it on. Okay, so now that we have our waveform on top of our clips in our timeline, I think this is a good time to go back to a topic that we just very briefly talked about before, and that is setting up some timeline views, because this is a great place to start. The first thing I'm actually going to do is turn my waveforms off, because what I want to do is I want to call this my default layout. This is normally how I like to edit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate right down here to the bottom to where it says untitled. You'll see a little pop-up has appeared that says view menu. What I'm going to do is simply click on that and I'm going to save this as appropriately enough normal. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to come up and I'm going to turn my waveform on. What I'm going to do now is you'll notice that as soon as I turn that waveform on, my view mode down here has changed. It's now been called normal one. What I'm going to do, again, I'm just going to click on the drop down. I'm going to come, I'm going to say save as. We're going to call this appropriately enough. Waveform small. I'm going to say okay. Now what I want to do now is I want to increase the size of my audio tracks. Not the video track, just the audio track. So how do we go about doing that? Well, if you remember a while back inside of our bin view, I showed you how you could increase the size of your thumbnail view where you get in and actually play a frame right from within your bin. Well, you can do the exact same technique inside of your timeline as well. What I'm going to do is deselect the video track and I'm going to navigate up here to my track control panel. I'm just going to click on the twirl just to get it back in there just to hide that because I don't need to see any of those options right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to press Control and L on Windows, Command and L on the Mac to increase the size of these audio tracks. Just the audio tracks, not the video track. I think that's pretty good. And what we're going to do here is we're going to navigate right down here again to the bottom to where it says Waveform Small. I'm going to twirl that down. We're simply going to call this one Waveform Big. Or actually, we'll call it Large. It sounds much more professional than just Big. What we're going to do is simply say OK. And now again, I'm going to navigate right back over here to my Waveform. I'm going to turn that off because there's one more view that I want to set up. What we're going to do is we're going to turn the volume information for these tracks on. And how we find it is one of two ways. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate over here to the hamburger. I'm going to click on the fast menu. I'm going to navigate up to audio data and I'm just going to come right down here to volume. And as soon as I do that, you're going to see if I hit Control and M on Windows, Command and M on the Mac here just to zoom in on my timeline, you're going to see now that we can actually see some numbers up the side representing the volume of these clips. Now if I even wanted to, I can simply hit Control and L to increase the size of these tracks even more. And you're going to see where this is going to come into play in an upcoming tutorial. I want to make those tracks as big as possible. Now remember, I'm only impacting tracks one and two, but that's okay. Once we get into the next tutorial, I'm going to have this set up for multiple different tracks, and you're going to see how this is going to come in handy for one method of audio mixing that you might want to do. I'm actually going to show you two different methods. But what we're going to do again is we're going to navigate down to the bottom here to our view menu. I'm going to say save as, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this volume mixing. Now, you'll notice again that I'm saving all of these presets in here. But the question is, where have these actually been saved to? Well, again, if we head on back on over to our settings, we navigate all the way down to the bottom here, you're going to notice that we have our timeline settings, and you'll see there are my four timeline views ready to either be switched to, or again, someone, a different user, can come in and borrow these if they like the way we have them set up to use them in their project. Okay, this was a little introduction to getting ourselves set up to start audio mixing. Now, in the next tutorial, we're going to get in and we're going to talk about the audio tool because, much like its name suggests, it's an important tool that we're going to want to utilize if we're going to do anything audio related inside a Media Composer or Symphony. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.